So one thing to remember is that the amounts of material involved are pretty small. So this is a glass ball that is the same size as the plutonium for the Nagasaki bomb. Um, uh, so you need more, as I mentioned, the gun type bomb is much less efficient. So you would need sort of two two liter bottles of HEU uh, for the gun type bomb. Um, but it's still not a huge amount of material that we're talking about. And what's more, although it is radioactive, it's not especially radioactive. And it's unfortunately not especially difficult to uh, carry around, smuggle, etc. It's very difficult uh, to find. This is a guy by the name of Sergeant Herb Blair. And in this, he's, you can see, he's just got no special equipment. He's wearing a t-shirt and very dirty chinos. Uh, and uh, in this box, he's got the plutonium for the first ever nuclear bomb for the, for the Trinity test that he's carrying in one hand. Okay? Um, so stopping nuclear smuggling once stuff is out of the place where it's supposed to be is a very difficult problem. All right, so some, things, some terms that you'll often hear, but which are misleading um, about nuclear materials. One of them, so highly enriched uranium, what is highly enriched uranium? It's defined as uranium that is at, contains at least 20% U-235. It's a somewhat arbitrary definition. In principle, you could make a bomb with slightly less enriched material than 20%, but the amount you need goes up and up and up, and it's really not practical to make a bomb with anything less than 20% uh, material. People often refer to weapons-grade uranium as being uranium with 90% uh, or more U-235. Sometimes you'll see 93% or more U-235. That's sort of a US definition, because that's what, what we, we enriched all our stuff to 93%. Uh, but you can make bombs with material far below weapon grade, and as I mentioned, the Hiroshima bomb was not weapon grade material. And do, do you know what the lowest enrichment level for working bombs that's ever been tested? Uh, a, I don't. B, if I did, it would probably be classified. <laughs> um, uh, plutonium, uh, weapons grade, is defined as 90% as, uh, or more of uh, plutonium-239. Actually, again, 93% is often the, the, uh, the uh, often used as the definition. As opposed to reactor-grade plutonium, where, you, where you're op if you want to operate one of these power reactors efficiently, you don't want to keep pulling the material out as soon as some plutonium is built up. So you leave it in for a long time, and that means more of this plutonium-240 builds up from absorption of neutrons in the plutonium. 239. And weapons makers prefer weapons grade plutonium because there's not so much of this plutonium 230, 240 around and also some of the other annoying isotopes. Uh, but you can make a bomb with reactor grade uh, plutonium. Um, with reactor grade plutonium, you have, which has more plutonium 240 and so on, you have a higher neutron emission rate. Um, so that means that there's a higher chance that a neutron will happen at the wrong time. Uh, and set the chain reaction off before you want it to be set off. Uh, but the fizzle yield, that is the yield you would get if, it, if a neutron happened at the worst possible time for the, for the Nagasaki design is about a kiloton. And the destruct radius for a kiloton is about a third of the destruct radius of the Hiroshima bomb. So we're still talking about something that would ruin your whole day. It's much lower yield. But, uh, and there are some advanced designs that are what are called pre-initiation proof. No matter how many neutrons you have, it won't go off uh, prematurely. Uh, you also have higher heat emission, which is more difficult, I would argue, to deal with. There are various uh, ways you can deal with that. There's higher radiation, so you need more shielding uh, when you're fabricating the weapon parts and things like that. Um, so it's, reactor grade plutonium is not going to be the preferred material. But it is a usable material either at uh, the crude level uh, or at the sophisticated how level. Do you, how do you enrich two weapons grade plutonium from reactor grade? I mean, reactor you, grade is what you separate chemically, separate from from. No. Radiation. So what 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 you try to do usually is just produce it as weapon grade in the first place. So you have a reactor that instead of being primarily designed to produce power, is primarily designed to produce plutonium, and you. You know, some plutonium-239 builds up, and, and you know, some plutonium-240 builds up, but only a little, and then you pull the stuff out before more plutonium-240 builds up. Whereas if you're running a power reactor, you don't want to be pulling the stuff out all the time. You want to, you know, run it for 
nine months or a year or something before you pull out fuel, and as a result, a huge amount of plutonium-240 builds up. So you might have, you know, 20, 30 percent plutonium-240 in uh, power reactor uh, plutonium, and you might have, you know, five, seven percent in plutonium-240 in weapon, uh, you know, plutonium produced for a weapon purpose. So that's the frequent refueling that people are talking about from heavy water right. moderated reactors. Right.